As to the possibility slash inevitability that Garoppolo will be cut, Lynch told reporters at the league meetings, I don't foresee that. He's too good a player. I think Jimmy will be playing for us or will be playing for someone else. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, you know, that's truer words have never been spoken. I think Jimmy will be playing for us or will be playing for someone else. But that really wasn't his point. He's too good of a player not to be. When you make a trade of that magnitude for Trey Lance, most of our options did not include Jimmy on our books, on our team. But you always have to adapt, and a series of events happened that it didn't work out. But that's not a bad thing, though. We feel positive about it. We'll make it work. Look, th this is th 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 that's a but that's a big word salad for saying we overplayed our hand when we could have traded him, and we didn't trade him. So now we're just going to keep him because we don't want to cut him because it'd be embarrassing if we cut him. I feel like that. I, I, I was saying that yesterday. I think on PFT PM, and we may have said it yesterday on PFT Live. So much of what's happening here is covering your ass. Avoiding a bad look, avoiding an embarrassing outcome, right. justifying decisions you've made, and it'll look bad if we cut Jimmy Garoppolo. Not it's in the best interest of our football team to keep him. Not we think he's a better option for us than Trey Lance, who may not be ready yet. No, we haven't traded him, so we're not going to cut him, and they're going to hold on to him apparently until somebody blows out an Achilles tendon somewhere. And they can maybe trade him. Well, how long does that play out? Where's the end game? Is it week one? Where where does that and and what does it do to your team to have a guy around that everybody loves while you're trying to let the other guy develop into becoming the guy that everyone will love in the future? I, I think that they're hurting themselves by trying to justify the decisions they've already made. I, I, I hear you there, Mike. It does seem like that, you know, from the outside looking in. It, it does, and I, I think you know you also. There's some pride at that, at, you know, at, at, at hand here. And the, you know, I, I guess maybe being a little bit, mm, I don't want to say selfish or just greedy and thinking they're going to get, you know, something substantial back for Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, that, that's what it seems like right now. And you're right. It does seem like they overplayed their hand. And now it's like, oh, wait, we got nothing. So we're just going to sit back and kind of see how this goes and, they don't seem like they're desperate to get him off the books right now. I, it, You know, you look at their roster, their team. Okay, it seems like they got things in place. We know it's a hell of a roster. We talked about the contracts on the horizon as far as Debo, Samuel, and Nick Bosa. But obviously they feel like that's not affecting that at this point. So, yeah, they're going to con continue to you know, hold Jimmy G or the situation hostage to get something out of it, because I'm sure, Mike, to your point, when they traded the three picks to get Trey Lance, they thought in their mind one day, master plan, they're going to get some good picks back from Jimmy Garoppolo. Now they're not, it doesn't seem like, and now they're going to be stubborn about it and hold on, you know, and, and they're trying to spin it a lot of different ways. And, hey, he's too good of a player not to. Well, he's not that good of a player. You guys don't want him. You've been trying to get rid of him for two or three years. Stop telling us how good he is, and yet you guys don't want him and have done everything to replace him. And I think people between that, watching film and all that, have realized, like, eh, it's, it's, it's dicey with Jimmy G. It's a risk to bring him in. Well, especially with the shoulder surgery, and that's what Lynch yes. said yesterday. Ultimately, the teams that we were closest with, the surgery gave them pause, and they ended up going in other directions. Yes, the surgery gave them pause for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's his throwing shoulder, and it happened in the postseason in the win over the Cowboys. Number two, he went and got it done without telling anybody. That's the kind of thing where... Once a guy does that, you're like, well, we're going to employ this guy and we got to worry about these kinds of issues in the future. And that's the thing. It's not a one year arrangement. If you bring in Jimmy G at 25 million, you need to take that contract and turn it into something longer term. Right. If you're going to give up trade assets for Jimmy G, this isn't a rental. This is a this is a buy. This is a four or five year thing. And what has he shown us over the past four or five years to make anyone say we're ready to go all in with Jimmy G, especially if he's got a busted throwing shoulder and he's proven that if he's not real thrilled with what's going on, he'll just go get shoulder surgery off site and not even tell anybody what's happening. That just doesn't bode well for the kind of relationship that the team wants to have with the franchise quarterback. So no, all these things thrown into the same bucket. Well, and, and, and I look at it this way, too, Chris. Let's, and I know the Vikings got very desperate in late August, early September of 2016 when Teddy Bridgewater's knee blew out. Right. And I, I don't want to act like it never happens, that there's some kind of a freak accident that wipes out a starting quarterback. But it opened the door 
for the Eagles to unload Sam Bradford for a one and a four to the Vikings and elevate Carson Wentz at a time when they were telling everybody Bradford's the guy and Wentz is going to sit on the bench. There came the opportunity and they got significant assets and they moved on. But even then, even if somebody loses their star, I mean, first of all, it doesn't happen very often no. that a guy in a non-contact practice, which for quarterbacks, they always are, right. unless there's some sort of an accident or some sort of a weird turn of events like we saw with Bridgewater. It very, very rarely occurs. Even if that happens, who is going to give up $25 million in salary at that stage? Let's say it happens in late August, like it did to the Vikings. Who's going to say, this guy doesn't know anything about our office, doesn't know anything about our team, we're going to give him $25 million for a one-year Band-Aid because we just happened to lose our start. No, they're going to say next man up. They're going to say next man up. I, I really do believe that. Instead of bringing in Jimmy G that close to the start of the season. So what are they waiting for? Are they waiting for some yeah. kind of a fluke injury now? I mean, it's they have to balance damage to the team in keeping him around and potential benefit that you can say, hey, we finally did get a third-round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo in August. I I don't know that it's worth yeah, the risk. The risk, the reward. The known, right. the known risk. When the chances of the reward are so slim. Yeah, I'm with you there, too. I agree. The The, the reward it does seem slim. I mean, it, it seems desperate at this point. I mean, we talked about it yesterday. When you really sit there and look at it, I mean, there's only, you know, Houston, we said it, you know, okay, makes sense. But I could see them going, wait, we're going in a different direction. We're kind of rebuilding our team. We want to see what Davis Mills has. We might draft another quarterback, see where we go from there. They're like starting a, a new thing there in Houston. They're finally, you know, cleansed of Deshaun Watson and that issue. You look at it and you really just read the room. It just seems like there's the Carolina Panthers and that's it. And again, I just can't imagine that they're going to be that desperate to send that many, you know, that many assets or even a third round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo, $25 million, like we talked about with, okay, they've been burned in two similar situations here. You know, with, with guys where the team didn't want them, okay, we'll take them. We'll see. We, we think we can make it work. All right. All right. You know, but, but damn, how many times are you going to do that? That's where it just seems limited. And, yes, it seems right now that the 49ers kind of ba back themselves into a corner here and have no way out and are just hoping something happens. And I don't think anything's going to happen, to your point. And I think at the end of the day, yes, cutting him is what's going to need to happen. And I'm with you, too. The fact that, hey, just wipe it, wipe the slate clean. Let Trey Lance Harris start. Here we go. Don't have the team wondering if both guys are going to be there or what, how this is going to shake down. Just get it out of everybody's head and have your commander and Trey Lance, and you move forward that way. Speaking of Lance, John Lynch said, we're thrilled with what Trey has shown already and where we know he is going to go. The opportunity for growth in the offseason program, that's just vital. Those 10,000 reps, he needs them. He'll have that opportunity this offseason. Well, yeah, because Jimmy G is recovering from shoulder surgery. But still, until Jimmy G is gone, that faction of players in the locker room who are pro-Jimmy G are going to still be there. And it's going to make it harder for them to accept that the team is moving on. It's going to be harder for them. Unless... Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch go to each one of them and make a very compelling case that we're just playing a game here to try to get a draft pick on the back end. The Jimmy G is not coming back. Push comes to shove. We're cutting him. Th that's the only way to get these guys to even begin to pivot from Jimmy Garoppolo to Trey Lance. It's, it's, it's a negative that the players love the guy so much. And it is, it, it creates, it well, creates a, a cloud over Trey Lance that that really shouldn't be there. It's it it's going to potentially slow his his growth and development and his crafting of relationships that he needs to craft with his teammates, knowing that Jimmy G's still on the roster. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Let, let, let alone like, you know, who's to say as Jimmy Garoppolo gets healthy from surgery that he's just going to go? I, I I don't want to even play for you guys, 49ers. I don't want to be there. Which is going to hurt their trade value even more. He's just going to go, I don't want to be there. You get, you made your bed. You got Trey Lance. Go ahead. I don't want to be here. 
that's going to cause issues as well. Going to lower the value even more. And then teams are going to go, oh, whoa, whoa, wait. I mean, he, he wants out. You guys really going to keep him, the guy that everybody likes in the locker room, with Trey Lance, and then yet he's talking bad about the team because he doesn't want to be there? You know, that that's that's the other thing, too. At some point, Jimmy's going to take that stance as well and go, I, I don't want to be a part of this. You guys have been trying to get me out of here for three years. And, see, that's where the 49ers, in my opinion, are a little like, you know, I don't want to say hypocritical, or they're trying to have it both ways. They're trying to have they it both ways. They are trying to have it both ways. There's no doubt. You're absolutely right. They're trying to, like, for years kind of go, hey, we're really good, but our quarterback's the problem. We're trying to replace him. We're trying to replace him. We're trying to replace him. And then it's like, okay, we got a new quarterback. Hey, the guy we had was really good. He was really good. He was really good. He wasn't the problem. Did you think I said he was the problem the last time? Oh, no, you must have misheard me. No, no, you've been telling us he's the problem. You've been giving us all the signals, but now you're trying to tell us he's worth a first or a second round pick. And, you know, the public or football people aren't going to buy that. He doesn't work for us, but he'd be really good for us. Yeah, exactly he'd right. Be really good We've for We've done you. everything to make him non-existent. <laughs> right. Not for us, but we think that this would be perfect for you. Here's the other reality. We, we touched on this yesterday, but let's hit it a little more clearly. Yeah. Because Garoppolo doesn't have to be quite as blunt as to say, screw you guys. I'm not, you know, I don't want to be here. Right. It, it all comes down to how they want to try to finesse the offseason and training camp. And while he's on the team, while they're waiting to trade him, once he passes a physical and once he's able to show up and do things, what are they going to do? Are they going to try to nudge him away from doing anything that could cause him to get injured? Yeah, that'd be scary. And then they'd be on the hook for the $25 million? Right. Is he going to go along with that? It's the Steve McNair grievance from 15... 15- or so years ago, when the Titans were trying to unload him, he, they ultimately was traded to the Ravens. He had a ten million dollar cap charge. They didn't want to get stuck with that if he dropped a weight on his foot or had some other injury. So they locked him out of the facility, and he yeah he had the NFLPA take the league to arbitration, and the ruling was you can't do that. Right. You can't lock the guy out if he wants to be in there, if he wants to work out, if he wants to be part of things. You can't tell him to stay home. So if Jimmy G wants to push it that way, like, hey, if I'm on the team, I'm showing up. I'm here. Let's go. And uh, it puts him in a position where they have to assume the risk of that. That And that that uh, another example of irony. As the 49ers wait for another team to have – a freak accident that knocks out their quarterback so they can trade Jimmy Garoppolo to that team, the 49ers may have to assume the risk of Jimmy Garoppolo being the one to have that freak accident yeah, and right. tying their hands for $25 million in cash and cap space for all of the 2022 season. Right. That, that, that's where, you know, it also, Mike, I just, as you were sitting there explaining it, I mean, just but what if Jimmy Garoppolo gets to, you know, July, right? And he starts to throw, oh, man, it, it doesn't feel normal yet. It, I don't feel good. Like, that, that can't pass me, the physical, right? What would then? Then what happens there, right? I mean, then they're going to be on the hook for for some sort of money, or, or certainly going to have an issue on their hands, nonetheless. To uh, that's another thing here, to where yeah, you're gambling by letting this go on, and I don't see, like you said earlier, a, a lot of rewards or or logic that makes me think, wait, they should wait because this could happen, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something I'm not thinking about. Lynch and Shanahan are smart, but it certainly doesn't pop to the forefront of my brain as we you know, sat here and thought about this the last 24 hours. And, and what would happen if he can't pass a physical? They would – it gets dicey. Yeah. They could cut him. There would be a grievance. The injury happened last year. He'd be entitled to injury protection up to $2 million under the CBA if they cut him because of an injury from the prior year. But it, it would be messy – but but he if he's having trouble throwing, they definitely don't keep him on the roster as of week one when the twenty five million becomes fully guaranteed. And and that's when this ends anyway. If they can't find a trade partner by week one, that's when you have to move on from it. Unless they really are committed to playing this thing out all the way. If they're com- I, I can't imagine them paying the guy twenty five million dollars to be Trey Lance's backup. I, I can't I, imagine. I, can, that. I can't either. I can't either. And and for all the reasons you've stated, Mike, over the last week, you know, just uh, again, you know, most teams that are successful don't have a riff in the locker room between wait, this guy's our quarterback. Oh wait, that guy's our quarterback. Wait, we like this one. We like that one. Uh, there is something to that about framing it around one guy and having that guy be the leader there. 
You know, so the, 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 I, I think you're spot on with that. And I think that's, to me, the biggest risk and would be something where I'd go, wait, we traded all these picks and everything for this guy here. Why, we're, 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 you know, kind of smushing his growth. We're, we're limiting it with, with some of these issues with Jimmy Garoppolo being around, taking some reps, taking some of his thunder, guys seeing him do something good and going, oh, wow, look, Jimmy G still got it. And yeah, I, I wouldn't want any part of that. I wouldn't. And, Mike, here's the other thing, too, that I, I at least comes into the play in my mind where I just wonder about, you know, at what point does – a Nick Bosa or Debo Samuel this offseason go, um, no, I'm pretty good. I'm definitely one of the three or four best players at my position in the sport. I'm not playing next year until I get my new contract. Like, you know, they've been fortunate, it seems like, and they do a good job of talking to players about these type of situations. But I got to think those type of tough, tough conversations are coming with Debo or Nick Bosa's representation. If I'm either guy, I'm not setting foot on the field anywhere until I get my contract. I'm not doing anything. I'm not showing up for the offseason. I'm not showing up for the mandatory minicamp. I'm not – I'll, I'll hold in. I'll do the TJ Watt yeah, where I right. show up and I'm there and I'm right. going to meetings, but I'm not practicing. I'm not putting myself at risk now that I'm in a position where it's time for me to get paid. I'm probably, I'm and, and look at the market at both positions. Yeah. Where the market is at both positions. Bosa can ask for $30 million a year, and Debo can ask for 25, 25 26, 26, 27 right, million right, a year. Right. So you you get rid of Garoppolo and you got $25 million that falls into your lap. That's yeah. going to take care of one of these guys for one year. Right, right. And and the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to get those other deals done. All, all of this because there's some weird ego driven. I, I, it's, it seems I, that I can't way. put I'm my finger you. on it. I know, it, you're right. But it, there something it doesn't feel like a good football decision. It feels like a good, we don't want to be criticized. We don't want it to look bad. We don't want to look like we did something stupid. And they're doing something stupid in order to avoid looking like they're doing something stupid. Yeah, I, maybe. They, maybe they are. You know, Again, maybe there's a part of this plan that we don't know or see or whatever. But it, it does look that way right now. It does. And what I would want to say to my friend or John Lynch is just go, screw it. Move on. You you believe in Trey Lance? That's why you traded for him? Go, like at this point. Just go forward and start the new era and, and don't worry about it. Don't, you know, drive yourselves crazy about, you know, we need to look good in the public eye for what we get for Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't think the public expects anything special for Jimmy Garoppolo. So, you know, there's no expectations from the public, I don't think, unless I'm wrong. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. But I don't think anybody's sitting here going, well, the 49ers should get a first or a second round pick for Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, every time that report comes out, I feel like most people in sports media are like, that's crazy, or they should take that. What are they, crazy? So, uh, I don't think there's great expectations or pressure around the situation necessarily. I don't think it's about the fans as much as it's about how they're perceived among the football world, the football world, yeah. the media who understands what's going on. Yeah. I think they they are allowing their ego as it relates to how those folks would react to get in the way of making good decisions. And, you know, with Trey Lance, the thought that I have from time to time is yeah. this because I've I've articulated this as it relates to other quarterbacks. If you have a guy that you hope is eventually going to win a Super Bowl for you, this is the kind of thing he should be able to process and work through. He should thrive in a situation like this. But this feels too self-inflicted. This isn't just like Tua last year. Dolphins looking to get a major upgrade over Tua. And, hey, Tua, if you don't like the Deshaun Watson talk, go out there and kick ass and take names and prove to them why they shouldn't want Deshaun Watson. This is, we've already gone out to get the upgrade. You're our upgrade, but we've got this other relationship that's unresolved that is impairing the ability of the upgrade to get comfortable, to get acquainted right. and develop the right relationships with his teammates. Like right. We're holding you back for dumb reasons because we're still clinging to the guy that you're supposed to be replacing this would be like the Dolphins getting Deshaun Watson but then saying yeah you know we kind of like Tua or 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 I was thinking as you explain this like the Kansas City Chiefs going you know we're gonna keep Alex Smith around just a little longer because we don't like what we, we thought we were gonna get more and be like why why start the new era if you're sold on it let's go you know Kansas City did it the right way I mean to your point I think that's what we're talking about here where they they made it clear all the all along like 
This is Alex Smith last year. We traded these picks to move up to get Mahomes. It'll be it. This is 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 it. Oh, the season's over. That was it. See you later. Good job getting us to the playoffs. But we could do better with the other guy. Uh, that That's the way the 49ers should have. They haven't played it that way. And like I think we said earlier, they, they're kind of trying to have it both ways with this one. Here's the one difference, though, potentially. Yeah. And we don't know the answer to this question. And this may be, this may be in a clumsy roundabout way the truth. The Chiefs knew in 2017 what Patrick Mahomes was going to be. You're right. They did. Do the 49ers know what they have in Trey Lance? I don't know yet. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good question. I think that's real. I think if, if you, they, if yeah. they knew, if they knew they were trotting out a guy that as of week one, 2022, right. Is going to, is going to light it up. And that's all we're going to be talking about the following week. Oh boy. Trey Lance. Oh boy. Here we go. Oh, the next big thing in the NFL. That's different. I'm not so sure that they know. And maybe one of the reasons they don't know it had Jimmy Garoppolo hang around all sure. last year. Right, right. I, 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 when it looked like I, yeah. at the time he wasn't going to be there. I mean, a year ago, when they did the trade, right around now, maybe in, uh, close to a year ago to the day, when they did that trade to move up to get that third overall pick, and we didn't know what they were going to do with it a right. month later, the initial thought was, see you later, Jimmy. Yeah. They're keeping him? Wait a minute. You've, you're going to give up three first-round picks and the third-round pick to get a quarterback, and you're keeping this guy around? It just, the whole thing about it, it's made no sense from the get-go. And I still believe they blew some sort of a fuse when they saw Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes playing against each other in the Super Bowl, knowing they passed on Mahomes in 2017, and they said no to Tom Brady a year earlier, and they had to look at both of those guys playing in the Super Bowl. I think they got desperate, they freaked out, and they, they, they made a bad move, a bad trade to ensure that they would get their pick of quarterback after Trey, uh, Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. Yeah. And I, and I and still the, don't even the believe the day, they made that trade it. going for Trey Lance. I mean, you can tell me whatever you want. I'll never believe it. I, I, I'm still going to go to my grave going, no, they made that trade you for know, Mac Jones. You they, know things. Well, you know things. I'm it's not being sarcastic. I'm saying you know things. Well, I don't know how far you want to go, but you know, you, you haven't, you wouldn't have been saying that for the last year if you didn't know something. Well, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've had a lot of, yeah, a lot of people come out of the woodworks and go I mean yo man hey your friend oh we think we hey, well, we think it was Mac Jones too oh well, well, we thought it was Mac Jones I mean yes I've, I've had a lot of people come to me with evidence to think that it was doesn't the, have to be Kyle telling no, you I know that's no. what everybody thinks exactly right it's I guess I wish everybody would realize that I've been around the NFL my whole life I have more than one friend in the league um but like yeah and uh, the, yes I, I that's what I believe it is it's two. somewhere they blew in <laughs> book two they blew a gasket <laughs> in the pressure of that situation and yes here we are today and we're they're still dealing with this quarterback situation and haven't figured it out and and I don't know where it goes but I don't see it being totally really, overly positive for the 49ers when all said and done here and uh, I think Jimmy Garoppolo has a lot of the power in this situation with, with the current situation and if you're Garoppolo you got to look at it and you got to be thinking screw you guys I almost uh, yeah. got you to the Super Bowl right I almost but for my own failures I would have gotten you to the Super Bowl hi I'm Mike Tirico and thanks for watching make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports